Deputy Vice Chair, ladies and gentlemen, and graduates. <laughs> families and friends, it's a great honour for me to be here, sharing this special day with all of you. I am truly both honoured and equally humbled to be presented with this magnificent award. By this university, Glasgow Caledonian University, the university for the common good. It has been my privilege to have been a teacher and a head teacher in this glorious city of Glasgow for 40 years. And I know many of you will find that difficult to believe, but honestly, it's been 40 years. <laughs> During this time, I have worked across a spectrum of provision of ages and of stages, but it has been my greatest joy to work within the early years, allowing me to work with hundreds of families, possibly thousands, predominantly from areas of this city where families have faced both spiritual and financial austerity. My vision was to work alongside the families in a holistic way, breaking down the barriers that seemed to exclude them from achieving their potential rising from the bleakness of poverty and shining a light on their journey forward in accessing education. Because as Nelson Mandela says, if there's one way out of poverty, try education. My mantra has always been to deliver the highest quality learning experiences for these families despite what life may have thrown at them or have said about them. Always realising that it is most definitely my own and everyone's job to help break down the shame of poverty and for children. This university, Glasgow Caledonian University, the university for the common good wrapped its arms around us in the Caledonian, in the form of the Caledonian Club. Eleanor, Nathan, Susan, Rachel, and I know that I have forgotten one, please forgive me. <laughs> wrapped their arms around us, inviting thousands of children and their families into this university, reaching out into their community and breaking down the myths, the myths that arise up around who is able to go on to a higher education. Tiny wee children have graduated through the doors of this university this university, Glasgow Caledonian University, the University for the Common Good. Jan asked me, how do we engage the disengaged? Well, I have to tell you, it isn't easy. You have to be brave and you have to ask yourself, and I'm personalising this, folks, what are you willing to stand up for? I have made it my life's mission to build relationships up with what many people may describe as the most prickly and difficult of parents. But knowing underneath all that how vulnerable they are. And it works. And sometimes it's got me into a great deal of trouble. But hey ho, it's been worth it. So many stories to tell, so many laughs to share, so many tears have flowed. 
and one I'm going to share with you because it's very pertinent to this day. I had been asked as a head teacher to support, and obviously I've given these people pseudonyms, David and Susan, to bring their very poorly wee boy to nursery every day by a multidisciplinary agency in order to support the family in all areas of the way the weaving's development. David was particularly unimpressed by authority figures of whom he perceived to be, or whom he perceived to be. However, he had a magnificent vocabulary and an equally magnificent way of being, and I liked him. I really liked him. Every day the wee one would arrive at 10.30ish, despite the fact that we opened at 8.30, and I would be around quietly suggesting maybe we could try to be wee, maybe a wee bit five minutes earlier tomorrow. My charm offensive seldom hit the mark, and at this point, I would also like to share with you that many of us and many of my parents ranked officialdom in terms of endearment and, and, and respect in a very hierarchical way, i.e. priests, anyone from the religious orders and doctors were at the highest pinnacle of their respect. One particular day, I sat quietly working in my office, door open as always. There's a limit to how much stand, time you can stand at the gate. <laughs> David swept by like a shadow at quarter to 11. And I very gently said, Maybe tomorrow, David, we can make it a wee bit earlier. In a flash, he was at my side. You, he said, you're only a wee heady. You're not even a real heady. You must think you're a doctor or something. Well, here I go. And ten years later, <laughs> I wish I could be back there. <laughs> I wish you a wonderful day. There is no one more relieved in this hall than your family that today has come. But I ask you to remember as you graduate, the ones who aren't here today due to their own vulnerability. Before I go on to the closing part of my speech, I in particular would like to thank my own family who've had to put up with being second best all of their life. They're here today and I would like to say to all of them, I love you and thank you for supporting me. I would also like to thank the Caledonian Club and this university for what they have done for the families of Glasgow. You are part of their alumni now. I give you a task. Think about what you will stand for. I'm going to leave you with three thoughts. Please, please use your gifts to illuminate the world of the vulnerable. Number two, ask yourself, what am I willing to stand for, wherever your career takes you? And finally, in the words of Maya Angelou, just like the moon, the sun and the stars, your tide will rise. Have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day. Enjoy, and I thank you again from the bottom of my heart for allowing me to be part of your day. Thank you.